stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm your host, Tracy Reinick, and this week I'm going solo to discuss the semiconductors. They've had a big run in 2023 after selling off big last year, so this is a nice rebound. But should you be jumping into the semiconductors here? Should you be chasing this rally? I'm going to talk about it. So the SOX, the iShares Semi ETF, it's ticker SOXX. It does track the semiconductor index. It's up 22.8% year to date versus just 3.6% for the S&P 500. And I saw an interesting tweet this week, which is what made me decide to talk about the semiconductors. And it was from Ryan Dietrich. He's the chief market strategist at Carson Group. He tweets out all this interesting kind of economic data and like stock market data. And he tweeted out on March 20th that the semis have made a new 52-week relative strength high versus the S&P 500. So not like a high versus like the S&P, but that's the relative strength of it versus the S&P. And he noted that normally this is not consistent with the recession, right? When you have the semiconductors outperforming the S&P 500, like a much higher strength level on the semis usually indicates something good is going on in the economy because that's when the semiconductors heat back up, not when there's something bad coming. And he also noted that there's never been a recession within two years of when the semis hit a new 52-week relative strength high versus the S&P 500. So what does that mean? Someone's going to be wrong, right? Maybe maybe it's different this time. Um, we don't know yet. But as I said, it does make some sense that when the semiconductors are showing this kind of strength, even though they did sell off last year. So last year, you know, they were signaling a recession that we did not get. And now they are strong. So you could say, oh, maybe they're forward looking and they're looking, you know, six months, 12 months down, and that may be, but that would mean we would have to be in a recession right now for them, uh, you know, this to not be signaling some kind of recession. And it's been rallying all year. It's been showing this strength, but it has now hit the new 52-week relative strength high. Um, So this is something to watch, and that's why I wanted to talk about it, because what is happening with the semis, if you aren't in them, And so you've missed out on the 23% gains so far this year. Should you be trying to dive in there? Should you be chasing it? So I took a look at this, the SOXX. That's the iShares Semiconductor ETF. It's the second largest of the ETFs by um, investments, you know, assets in there, almost 7 billion in assets. And it has 30 holdings. The top 10 make up about 57% of the entire ETF. It has an expense ratio of 0.35%. If you're thinking about just buying the whole shebang, nothing wrong with buying ETFs. But I took a look at the top five holdings as of March 20th, 2023, to get a flavor on what's in it and what what's happening with those underlying components are those just as equally as hot? Uh, are there any deals in there? What's happening? So let's dive into the top five components on this ETF and to see what is going on with the semiconductors. So the first one out of the gate is the premier semiconductor right now, I believe. And uh, I think everyone would agree with me on this. And it is NVIDIA, ticker NVDA, of course. It's a Zach's number three hold right now. Year to date, the shares are up about 76% now. So red hot in 2023. But you can see how far they've declined because over the last year, the shares are still down 2.6%. So it's been a wild ride for anybody owning in the last year. You're still down, but barely. Um, 
And so the question is, if you're not an NVIDIA, should you be diving in after this big run? So in the fourth quarter of 2023, revenue was down 21%. Full year revenue was basically flat for fiscal 2023. Um, And then looking at the earnings estimates coming up for fiscal 2024, analysts are bullish again, up 34% to $4.48 versus $3.34 last year. Fiscal 2025, that's a pretty far away right now because they're just in the first quarter of fiscal 2024. But fiscal 2025 up another 33% to 597. So those analysts are bullish, as I said. For this year, fiscal 2024, nine are higher in the last 30 days, but four are lower. So they've just been kind of uh, adjusting their estimates here. But more on the bullish side than the bearish. It does pay dividend yielding just 0.06%. It's four cents a quarter, but they have a big share buyback plan. Last fiscal year, they bought back 10.4 billion in shares. Now the kicker is valuations. PE now stands at 57.8 times. Now, NVIDIA has always been more expensive out of all the years I've talked about it on this podcast. Um, I can't remember a time when it traded even under 30 times, maybe once or twice in in all the years, in seven years. But um, now it's definitely up there closer to 60 times as a peg ratio of 3.3. If you were hoping the peg would help you, it's not terrible. It's not sky high for the peg, but definitely not any value there either, even though those earnings estimates are on the rise. So NVIDIA, still the best in class. It's got the gaming, and now it's making a big push into the AI category. That's what has everyone excited. It's 8.5% of the SOXX. It's the biggest position. Um, Should you chase it here? That's what this whole thing is about, today's podcast. And, well, I'm the value investor, so I would say no after this massive run-up here. Um, but my colleagues who are the growth and momentum strategists would say if it has momentum, it will continue to have momentum. So um, they might be willing to get in at these levels, but I'm still on the sidelines here. Um, but that's NVIDIA, ticker NVDA. Okay. Uh, second component, it's 8.25% of the portfolio is Broadcom, ticker AVGO. These shares are up this year as well, but just 13.8%. It's also a Zach's number three hold. But uh, what's going on with these estimates? So these are also expected to be up this fiscal year, up 9.9% to, to 41.38% from 37.64 last year. 12 estimates are up in the last 30 days and only one is down. Um, Oh no, none are down. One of those uh, estimates is also up in the last week. So plenty of bullishness in the last 30 days and then another change higher in just the last week. Uh, What does valuation look like? It's much more attractive. That's why you find this stock in a lot of income investors' portfolios and value because the PE is at 15.6, PEG is 1.2, dividend is yielding 2.9%. So almost 3%. That's not too shabby. That's why the dividend incomers like it. So that's Broadcom AVGO. It's uh, a lot more attractive here. And while it's up um, on a value basis, I do like what I'm seeing on Broadcom. Okay, number three is Texas Instruments, ticker TXN. It's almost 8% of the portfolio of that ETF. It's 7.96%. Year-to-date, this one's up to 7.2% only, but that's still beating the S&P 500. And uh, it's also a Zach's number three hold. What do these earnings look like? So 2023 expected to be down 19.8% to $7.53 versus $9.39. Nine estimates are down in the last two months and two are up during that same time. So nobody's chimed in 
more recently, we are going to have earnings coming up again shortly on uh, a lot of these, but certainly on Texas Instruments. So dividend yielding 2.8%, so that's pretty nice. PE is at 23.8 and the PEG is at 2.5. So not all that cheap here, um, given what you're looking at with this decline in the earnings and the shares being up. It's a little bit of a value trappiness feel here with Texas Instruments, but um, you might want to keep it on your watch list, ticker TXN. Then uh, number four is Advanced Micro. AMD is the ticker. Don't make my mistake and do ADM. Supermarket to the world, Archer Daniels Midland. Those poor two tickers get swapped out quite a bit. It's easy to do, but this one is A. M is in Mary D, AMD, and it's 7.18% of the portfolio right now, that ETF. And this is actually a number four rank, which is a sell here at Saks. And that when I first saw that, I, met, I, I immediately thought, oh, the estimates must be being cut recently. And sure enough, for 2023, estimates are now expected to be down 14% to 301 versus 350, with 14 estimates down in the last two months, including one in the last week. So analysts still pretty bearish on advanced micro. And they're not moving yet in the right direction. But year to date, these shares are up 46.5%. So uh, pretty much the street not paying any attention to that decline in the earnings estimates. They don't care. They're buying it anyways. PE is now 32.2 and a peg of 4.7. No dividend with advanced micro. So again, um, a little bit of... Uh, maybe forward looking here with advanced micro, the street is already thinking ahead and the analysts can't afford yet to think quite ahead. So they're still cutting those estimates, but the street is already racing ahead. So you're going to get a little bit more expensive stock as we see with that PE there. So that's advanced micro AMD. And then the fifth largest holding in this ETF is Qualcomm, ticker Q-C-O-M, and it makes up 5.75% of the ETF. And this is up 11.8% year to date. So all of these stocks are up. You can see now why the overall uh, ETF is also up so nicely. So we are seeing some nice gains in all of these big cap semiconductor stacks. Year to date, oh, Year to date, as I said, up 11.8. It is a Zach's number three hold as well. But the earnings on Qualcomm are expected to fall 24.1% here in fiscal 2023. That's at 951 from 1253 last year. So that's pretty considerable cut in the earnings there. But that makes these shares even cheaper, and they are cheap. So PE is just 12.8. The peg is 0.8. So the peg under a one is indicating both growth plus value. So even though those earnings are being cut, the shares are still cheap enough on that PE basis to get you the peg under one. That's pretty impressive. Uh, dividend is pretty decent, yielding 2.5% right now. So some dividend income people might be in there because it's not that easy to find over 2% dividends in many of the tech stocks. So when you do find one, people are you know willing to dive in. <laughs> uh, but that's Qualcomm, ticker QCOM. So as you can see, it's kind of a mixed bag in these top five holdings that's in the SOXX ETF. They're all up year to date, some way more than others. Some are much more expensive than others. You do have some genuine value stocks in here. You've got the big growth and momentum play in NVIDIA. So you've got a lot of different drivers here. Has the industry already bottomed? Is Ryan Dietrich's tweet going to be incorrect, the semi-warning that's in there, um, although it's not really a warning. He's just pointing out that you normally don't have a recession when you have 
the semis this hot versus the S&P 500, basically. And so will we avoid a recession? Hard to believe with everything going on right now, both on the inflation front, job layoffs that are being announced, and the banking crisis that is happening out there. Can the U.S. economy still avoid it? It's possible. Anything is possible, as we know. Uh, But the semiconductors behaving as if it will avoid it. And so that's very interesting. Now, back to our original question that I started this podcast, should you chase the semiconductors here? Well, it depends on what kind of investor you are, right? Like I said, a lot of growth and momentum investors have no troubles diving in right here because it does have tremendous momentum. And it is apparently signaling things may be better behind the scenes in the global economy than what have been let on. But value investors probably will be a bit more cautious here as I am. I don't own any semiconductors in Zach's value investor portfolio. But after looking at a couple of these, I'm thinking, huh, maybe since there is some value in some of these big names, I need to start poking around. So that's the question, too. If you're going to buy individual stocks or if you're going to buy an ETF, like the SOXX, that gives you the big diversified portfolio with 30 holdings. That might be an easier way to play some of this momentum. But semiconductors, a big driver of the global economy now, and it's never a bad idea to own some exposure to the semiconductors. But um, the question is, should you be waiting on the sidelines for a pullback? You know what I say, we always do get pullbacks, so it's never uh, probably a bad idea to kind of put it on your watch list and keep an eye on what's going on with the group. Um, But it has been one of the hottest to start 2023. The only question is, will that continue or will some buyers get that opportunity to jump in there at a slightly lower price. Um, We will see, but it's good to see that a big driver of the global economy is signaling something that's actually bullish right now instead of bearish. So let me recap the tickers we talked about. There is the iShares Semiconductor ETF. That's the ticker S as in Sam, O-X-X. So double X is there, S-O-X-X. And then we had NVIDIA, the king of the semiconductors, I want to say, um, ticker NVDA. We had Broadcom, AVGO, Texas Instruments, TXN, uh, Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, and Qualcomm, ticker QCOM. And as always, you need to subscribe to get all of the Market Edge podcasts because we're talking about everything going on in the economy right now and there is a lot going on. So be sure to get us. Get us on Apple Podcasts. Get us on Spotify. Get us on Amazon Music. But get us somewhere and I'll see you again next week with some more stocks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified I described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.